Even though George Mouse had taught him to be a city man and not afraid of women, a lifetime's habit was not so easily overcome, and he went on looking. And only after a decent interval of being paralyzed with uncertainty did he force himself to walk the rug to where they sat. He sat down on the floor by them, a fixed smile on his face and a bearing that made him look. And he was stunned to feel as Daily Alice turned to look at him, visible to her. Oddly breakable. Later, as he was going up the back stairs, he met Daily Alice coming down, suddenly, at a turning. Now there was no idiot grin on his face. Now she wasn't giggling. They slowed as they approached each other. When she had squeezed past him, she didn't go on, but turned to look back at him. Smokey was a step higher than she, so that their heads were in the relation dictated by movie kisses. His heart pounding with fear and elation, and his head humming with the fierce certainty of a sure thing, he kissed her. She responded as though for her, too, a certainty had proved out. In the midst of her hair and lips and long arms encircling him, Smokey added a treasure of great price to the small store of his wisdom. As a man well might who had grown up anonymous, Smokey had always thought that women choose or do not choose men by criteria he knew nothing of, by caprice, like monarchs, by taste, like critics. He had always assumed that a woman's choice of him or of another was foregone, ineluctable, and instant. So he waited on them, like a courtier he waited to be noticed. Turns out, he thought, standing late that night on the stoop, turns out not so. They, she anyway, is flushed with the same heats and doubts, is like me shy and overcome by desire, and her heart raced like mine when the embrace was at hand. I know it did. He stood for a long time on the stoop, turning over this jewel of knowledge.